Lesson 7.2, write fractions as sums with the same denominator. We can write a fraction as a sum of fractional add-ins with like denominators. And the sum of the numerators of the add-ins is the numerator, and the denominators will all be the same. So let's see what that means. It means that we can write a fraction like 2 eighths as a sum of fractional add-ins with like denominators. And the sum of the numerators, this 1 plus 1, of these add-ins is the numerator, the 2. And the denominators are all the same. We add the numerators and use their common denominator. We break apart the fraction, like 2 sevenths, into add-ins that are unit fractions. A unit fraction is a fraction that always has one as its numerator. It tells us the part of the whole that one piece represents. We have one half, we have one for the numerator, it's a unit fraction. It means we have one of two parts. One third is one of three parts. One fourth is one of four parts. And one fifth is one of five parts. So we can write a fraction as a sum by breaking it into unit fractions with the same denominator. And the numerator tells us how many unit fraction add-ins we will need to write. We have three-fourths. That means if this is one whole, we have three one-fourth parts. The three tells us we're going to have three add-ins of unit fractions. They all have a one for a numerator. We can write a fraction as a sum by breaking apart the numerator into add-ins and using the same denominator. Five-sevenths, we can break apart the five into a two and a three to have two-sevenths plus three-sevenths. We could also break apart the five into a one and a four and have one-seventh plus four-sevenths. For nine-tenths, we can break apart this nine as a two and a seven and have two-tenths plus seven-tenths. We could also break apart the nine as a four and a five and have four-tenths plus five-tenths. Here we have seven-tenths. That means out of ten squares, seven are colored in. We can break the seven into a one and a six and have one-tenth plus six-tenths. And we could also write it as six-tenths plus one-tenths. We could change the order. We could write it as a two and a five for two-tenths plus five-tenths, or a three and a four as three tenths plus four tenths. And the commutative property of addition says we can add add-ends in any order. We know we're going to get the same sum, so we only need to show the add-ends one way. If we need to list the add-ends for seven tenths, we only need to list them one way. We don't need to list them in the other order. The commutative property of addition says we can add add-ins in any order, so we only need to show the add-ins one way. And we can also use more than two add-ins. We could break the seven in seven tenths as a one, a two, and a four, and we could write one tenth plus two tenths plus four tenths. And fractions with lower numerators will have fewer possible add-ins than fractions with higher numerators. For two-thirds, we can only write the two as a one and a one, so we would have one-third plus one-third. Two-thirds can only have unit fractions as add-ins because the two is so small. And for two-ninths, we can only write one-ninth plus one-ninth. But look at five-ninths. We could break this five apart into a one and a four, a two and a three. We could even write five unit fractions or three unit fractions and a two-ninths, or two unit fractions and a three-ninths. And the five is a higher number, so it's going to have more possible add-ins. The greater the numerator, the greater the amount of possible add-ins we can list. We can list more add-ins for six than we can for two. Two, we can only write a one plus one. For six, we could write six ones 
as the add-ins, or four ones and a two, or three ones and a three, two ones and a four, or a one and a five. We can even write a two and a four, or a three plus three as possible add-ins. A lot more add-ins for six than there are for two. Mrs. Kim baked an apple pie and cut it into eight equal slices. She sold three slices. She put each remaining slice on a small plate. How many small plates did she use? So if we have a pie cut into eight equal slices and we have all the slices, we have eight parts of eight. We have the whole pie. Remember, when the numerator and denominator are the same, it equals one whole. So we can write the one whole pie as eight eighths. She sold three slices, so we're going to take away three eighths. She put each remaining slice on a small plate. How many small plates did she use? We have five eighths left. We have five slices left. We can write it as a sum of unit fractions as one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth. That is five plates that Mrs. Kim used. When we use unit fractions as add-ins of a fraction, the numerator tells us how many unit fraction add-ins to write. Three-fifths will have three unit fraction add-ins. One-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. Four-sevenths, we have a four, so we will have four unit fraction add-ins. We will have four of the unit fractions one-seventh. Mr. Lee's garden is divided into six equal parts. He will fence the garden into four areas by grouping some equal sections together. What part of the garden could each fenced area be? Well, we think six equal parts, well, that's equal to six one-sixth size parts. That's equal to six six. We need to find how many one-sixth size parts can be grouped together to make four parts. We write an equation with four add-ins that will equal six six. And we can draw a model to help us. He divided his garden into six equal parts. So we have six one six parts. He fenced the garden into four areas by grouping some of them together. So we can group together two of them to make a two six and two more of them to make a two six. Then we'll have four parts. We'll have a one six, a one six, a two six, and a two six. We'll have four add-ins. We'll have a one six like this purple area, a one six like this blue area, a two six like the green area, and a two six like the pink area. That's four add-ins, that's four parts. We add them together, one plus one plus two plus two is six. We have the same denominator, that's equal to six six. We can also break it apart into a one six, a one six, a one six, and a three six. That would be four add-ins. That would equal six six. And we can write these fractional add-ins in any order because of the commutative property of addition. We'll get the same sum. So remember, we can write a fraction as a sum of fractional add-ins with like denominators, and the sum of these numerators as the add-ins is the numerator, and the denominators are all the same. Remember, a unit fraction is a fraction that always has one as its numerator. It tells us the part of the whole that one piece represents. In our next lesson, 7.3, we're going to add fractions with like denominators by using models. I'm really proud of you. Stay focused and have a great day. Bye.